with Sarah on a hot spring day in New Jersey. Um, <clears throat> gonna paint one of those phone stands that I ordered. Um, this is the flourished phone stand and I'm gonna put some dragonflies on here. This is an e-pattern that I ordered. It's by Tracy Moreau. Here's the, cause it's on my phone. So that's the phone stand. And I just wanted to share the background. It's a bit different. I mean, it's not, it's no, it's not rocket science. It's, oops, sorry. Um, we're going to dry brush and I'm going to use my stencil brush. I'm going to use some, I'm going to use antique white. I think she calls for warm white, but you know, use what you have. And to dry brush, I'm putting the paint out, just I'm shook it up and put it out. But then when I load, after I load my brush, I want to basically take most of it off, most of it, so I'm really, I went heavy, because that's how I do, right? And then I'm going to pounce and rub, all right, but I don't want to take it all off. I'm going to start on the back, this is like a little um, stand, right? So you just would slide this in here. Well, I just painted it so it might, oh, there we go. And it's going to go in and hold your phone, all right? So... I'll have to make sure that's good, but let's start with this. So this is the printed out directions, but let's go with, and she says go down. Now how would, it doesn't matter, because basically, if you look at her picture, it's really, it's not showing a lot of black when all said and done. Man, this is cool. This just makes me happy. So I've not done this before, so I'm not a professional, but I think I'll be able to figure it out and I'll just like it regardless. Now, one thing I'm noticing is when you get these splotches or whatever, not splotches, but wetter streaky marks, it's because the, the paint on my brush is wet there. So a true dry brush is, you know, and this Tracy's brush is like cut differently. So it's not just flat, but look at that. I just want it to look, and she has it from the top down, but it doesn't matter. And this is, that's why I wanted to practice on the back. This is the, um, the stand. I'm going to do it all over the place before I go to the front of it. I think if you go from the top down, you're going to get those, the dark bits. Let's, let's, let's look at hers for a sec. All right, go back. So, I mean, whatever. And then I think even before we do more to it, we're going to sand it a little bit. So I think the idea is it's going to be mostly white with a little bit of black showing through. So, I mean, this is very sheer. I mean, really, right? So maybe I'll put out some more. And you know what? It's to each his own as well. So it's And it's not going to be wrong no matter what. This brush is just... The way it has those, I'm just going to do it. So I'm pouncing the color first into the bristles. Then I'm just taking off the really wet paint. And then let's try it again. I'm going to try and darken this up a little. See, now it's getting a little more streaky. I kind of like that. But if I put it down, I'm going to get a circle of color. So the idea is you want to, like, use the brush and... Yeah, see, I think I'm glad I did it on the back first, on this part, because then when I go to the front, I'll give, have a better idea of what I want the, the look to look like. I'm going to reload, pop it in the color, pounce, pounce and, and dry it a little bit, maybe. Yeah, I think I was a little too careful because I'm liking what it looks like when I'm not as careful. I like that the paint is getting stuck to the edges more. But see when I stay on the piece, yeah, so that'll be the bottom. And we're going to do a uh, color on top of this too. I think that could be good. So when I go to the front, you just got to make sure your piece is, your, your brush is loaded correctly. And you know what, I'll do both sides and I'll be able to choose which side I like better. So again, I'm going to go into the paint 
pounce it around a little, just loading the bristles with the paint, and then gently take it off. So this is, I, this is the least I've taken off. And it says, I'm gonna just read what it says. Dry brush the entire surface from top down using a stencil brush loaded with warm white. It should look dry, a bit streaky, and not quite fully opaque. I don't think my brush is loaded enough. I think I need more paint. And maybe I won't push as hard. See, I am such a heavy hand, so I'll let the brush do the talking. That's what I want to do. So blot it off and just maybe dry brushing actually just means I haven't added water to my brush first. Oops, see I stuck it right down the middle. Oops. Wow, so now I just pushed a little harder. <gasps> I like it. Yeah, I think the top down just means you don't want to stop right in the middle. That's what happens when you stop right in the middle. But I like that. That's way cooler than this. Although I still think I need it to be more white. So I just reloaded and gently... So I'm not even going to blot on the paper towel. It needs to be a little more white though. So I hope, oh my gosh, and I'm drinking coffee, so. I don't know about you guys, but when I drink coffee on a hot day, I get hot. It gets like a hot flash. But cool. See, this is cool. Oh yeah. I just love how that black is popping through. I got a little something there. I'm just pop pulling it off. Because all that really is going to go on here are two dragonflies and a word. I think I need it more white. So I'm going to go off camera and get this part finished and then come back and do the next part. I'll be right back. Okay, so I just wanted to come back because as I'm doing it, I feel like this is the look she wanted. And this is basically loading the brush in the paint, not dry brush, like not wiping the paint off. So I'll do it again on this side. But that's what she's looking for. Let me see if I can do it because that's wet. I'm going to do it on this side, okay? So I'm going to put out some fresh paint. <clears throat> and load the brush in it. So I'm swirling it and really loading the brush in the paint. And then top down. So I'm going to go. But see how it's like really covering now. Top down. So see, it got way whiter. Like I think... I think that's what she wants. And that way, you only have a little bit of black showing through. Let's go up a little. That's what she wants, I think. And then we're going to sand it a little. I love it. See, it's wet. I don't like, that's too black. This It has to be more white. So this is what it should look like. This is so pretty. I love that one. All right, let's try it again. I probably should have done it first on something else. I mean, if you buy a piece of wood that's like, I mean, it was $8. But this is the actual piece, and, I, and it's a gift. So I want to make sure I know how to do the technique if I want to do, you know, I mean, if I care. <laughs> All right, so basically, I have not wiped off the paint. And that is the look. So I'm getting dark patches of, of the white. And I like that better. So I'm actually really cleaning my brush off on that. That's what I think. That's what it should look like. Because the next step is we're going to add, well, we're going to add a little color. Sheer, sheer color. And I may use a, um, a blending medium or some type of gel. I'm going to use glaze, glazing medium. That's what I'm going to use because I want 
I don't want to dress my brush with water and dilute the pigment since I don't have the um, the fluid acrylics because well anyway when I did the, these I used straight paint but then I came back with floats to try and pop the color up a little bit um, so I'm gonna do similar so that looks pretty like I really don't need to So this is the back anyway. This is just the stand portion, but that looks really pretty. So I'm just kind of going to prop it over there. Now this is the one side of the, um, which I like a lot. So let's see what this side's going to look like. I got to jazz this one up a little. I am loading the brush and swirling it on my palette paper. So really loading it but I haven't added any water and I'm not pushing and painting it on. I'm just letting the brush from top down. Oops. That's it guys, that's it. That is it. Very, very happy with that. I love it so much. So now I'll just have to decide which side. I think this is the front. This is the front. <clears throat> now I'll go off camera, let that dry, clean my brush, and we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, be back in a sec. All right, it looks good. I've done all the surfaces and I've also sanded it with a fine sandpaper. And I think I will probably come in and uh, do the edges, at least just like kind of pat the edges on because I like the, the kind of um, age, the weathered look of it, but I wanted to make sure the slots weren't filled with paint or anything. It feels so good once it's sanded. So the next step is to, to add some stamping. And I chose, I have this old Tim Holtz stamp that I've had forever and rarely used. So I'm going to use this. You know what, let me see if I have a stamp block. It'll just be easier for me to hold I do. I have this big stamp block. I don't know if it has any sticky left. But I think I'll get better coverage because it is such a big stamp. Yeah, that'll hold. Um, I've also gotten out some color here that we're going to use in a minute. I forgot about this part. So I'm going to ink this up and I'm going to stamp it onto all the surfaces, I think. Um, this one's called, I have, this one's called Papillion, I think. Here it is. Papillion, Papillon, I don't know how you say it. And she actually uses a lot of these mixed media artists are teaming up with, uh, Stampendous and she used the vintage letter stamp by Stampendous so um, I mean use what you have that's what I say right I mean I love Stampendous is getting more into the mixed media world so a lot of the decorative painting artists are using these bigger because they're bigger stamps for backgrounds um, and so I'm going to ink this up and I'm just using archival I probably could use a new pad, but I don't know. This is a black, jet black, and it's a permanent ink. Sorry about that loudness. And let's just, I'm going to go on to the, this part first. Let's see what happens. See if I like it. Oh, yeah. Love it. So I'm going to do all the sides of it. So if you want it a little less, you can do it a second stamp. I'm also going to do the little front pieces, the stoppers, so I want to put them in there. So now everything should be blending in. I'm going to 
ink this up real good and do the front. Try not to be as loud. <laughs> And I'm going to probably do, I'll do it top and bottom, like I, I'll stop at this if I can. I'm going to stand up and put a little pressure since it's on wood. So there's a blank spot, but I don't mind. It doesn't matter if it's upside down or, if, actually this stamp goes all different ways. It has different kinds of letters. It has some numbers over here so I'll do both sides and just choose which one I like better um, what com comes after this then we're gonna apply wash wait first let me see because I think she might have us then it says to apply a coat of matte medium over the entire surface so I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the back of this apply matte medium to all the surfaces and I'll be back to do the next step which is to add some color be right back Okay, I've, I've uh, sanded and applied matte medium. I am absolutely loving this background. I can't believe like it, how simple it is yet how effective. So next step is to add some color and we're going to do that with washes and a wash is basically just a very, oh and I've done the little, I don't know, thingy majabies that they are. Um, and then I have kind of taken this tool and made sure to keep the, the slot clear of um, and when it's really really dry I'll be able to make sure I, I think it fits though um, the stand is going to be able to go in there all right um, washes now I put this paint out a minute ago it has a little skin over it that's okay I'm going to use gel medium I'm sorry glazing medium and she Tracy here's what Tracy says to do Apply washes of the following colors in small patches, five or six patches. She doesn't list the colors, but they're listed on the front, and I'm using what I have. Keeping the darkest value to the outside edges. Let the colors overlap slightly. I use fast drying glaze to move the color around easily. Let it dry. Trace and transfer the dragonflies to the surface. So the colors she has are aqua sky, lilac, um, diarolide, yellow, dioxazine, purple, magenta, primary magenta, green gold, ooh, and matte medium. Green gold. I don't have a green gold. And I have this as a reference, so I'm just kind of looking at this. I don't know where I see green gold. That could be green gold. But there are the fluid acrylics, and I'm, I'm thinking I want to invest in at least five or six of those that maybe the primary colors plus pink and anyway but um, I don't really know I mean I think yellow and red make orange red and blue make purple which I have purple but how is I gonna make green um, what is it yellow and blue make green anyway I'm just using these colors and I think it'll be pretty regardless but you know I'm just it just helps me when I know why or what or how anyway to, to just understand the process a little more that's just the way my brain operates so um, you don't really need to know now I did put my brush in water for whatever reason because I don't want to use water I want to use this glazing medium so I'm going to dress my brush in glazing medium so I've basically just loaded it with the glazing medium and then I'm going to take a corner so I'm breaking that little skin on there and just kind of load I'm going to do it as a float and I'm going to start let's just start at the top here and kind of she said keep the darkest to the outside edge so I can keep the darkest color to the top and kind of bleed it out into the middle and then I'm going to do the back. Like I'll do a few areas with that color. She said five or six, right? So I'm going to go here and maybe a little bit here. And then how about on my little guy here? Um, you know, 
it is what it is, guys. Some here. Because I am crazy about... Actually, this is called... Um, this is an Americana color, and it's called Mendicino. Oh, no, it's a Ceramco color. Mendicino Red. But to me, it comes off as like a super... It does look red. I can see the red. But it's kind of a really poppin' pink as well when you do it sheer. So I'm going to rinse my brush. And I'm going to grab... Let's do the yellow because I know that yellow and red make orange. And that way, if I overlap these two, I won't get mud. Dressing in... I rinsed in water, but I dressed in the glaze. I'm going to corner load into the yellow and blend it and let's go uh, darkest to the outside edge right let's go here I'm actually trying to make some orange yep look I got a little orange right there kinda peachy this is so fun for me Anything with color, it, it makes me so happy. So I'm putting a little down here. We still have a lot more to go. So I am a heavy hand, and I have a hard time doing anything little in little form. So I have a lot of other colors to add. So maybe I'll leave yellow off that side. I have some purple. Now, purple and yellow, I mean, I think that, I don't know, I don't know. We, purple, when you add purple, it, it can make mud. So just be careful if you're overlapping. But if I stay away from the other colors, I should be fine. I'll do it on this part first. Oh, yeah, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. And down here. Just a little, and I have to keep it sheer. See, I get so carried away. It's a gorgeous color, though. It makes me so excited. But see, even though I went on the yellow, it didn't really turn brown. But just be careful. And I'm going to determine my front and back based on which sides I like best. So... I don't know if you can really see what's happening. There's no real difference in... Oh, I have all my colors out already. So here's a little bit of... This is called Bahama Blue. It's like a tealy color. And I, I'm actually working on the other... Um, I want to just show you... There was a background technique that really got covered up when I did the Sugar Skull um, ATC. But I'm going to share it with you... Um, before the end of this video because it is so cool and it's basically just doing like I'm gonna blot off the color a wash with a shop towel so you'll see alright let's add this look how gorgeous it's already looking but I've covered up a lot of the space now blue and yellow make green but that yellow is already dry um, I think that looks cool. It might be in the running for front. Can you see that? And you can um, establish this look with your Tim Holtz um, inks, your ink pads. Um, but I'm loving that it's happening with paint. That is gorge. OMG. All right, so some more gel medium and some more of that Bahama Blue. So this is just the stand part of the piece, so it's not like it's the real, you're not going to see a ton of it, but I am enjoying the color. This is the color portion of this tutorial. So gorgeous. OMG. Alright, so I am going to go off camera and do the other side, and then we'll choose our front and back. And I'll move on to the next step. But look how pretty. OMG. For a background. 
and then we're going to put dragonflies on there and it, nothing is cuter than that look at it oh my gosh all right you guys i'll be back with the next step all right i'm back the piece is done i finished it it's drying i've got to do one last thing to it but i figured i'd just show you this background real quick before i reveal um, because this one was so cool and it's a super simple process so I'm gonna use Prussian blue now here's the thing look at this this is called deep midnight blue by Americana I'm pretty sure Tracy's using Americana Prussian blue but this is the Delta Ceramco Prussian blue and basically they look the same regard it's not the same as what she's using but it's still a dark blue I I like either one of these could be used I think I'm gonna use this one the deep midnight um, just because it's fuller I have more and I'm gonna be using it throughout the piece now she wants me to mix glazing medium with the paint four to one let me let me double check if it's three to one or four to one because usually it's um, okay four to one it says which I don't know I would say because I go by quarters so I would go three to one you know what I mean just saying that but who knows I don't know um, so I'm going to take some of this glazing medium that's just the one I have and make a little puddle and then I'm going to add some of the paint so that's going to be the bigger puddle basically all right and just a one that's actually a little small if it's four to one I think that looks good all right I'm gonna take my palette knife and mix them together then I'm gonna uh, brush this onto the piece and again I'm gonna do this stand portion first just in case and stuff but really I had no problem with this I did the ATC and I was so sad because I covered up the whole background all right good enough so that's mixed she said to take a shop towel and I happen to have those these are the type of towels that you could get at an automotive store I think they're just a bit more absorbent or they're thicker so I'm gonna rip this in half actually and crumble it into a ball kind of crumble it up first I have to apply this sorry I'm, I'm ahead of myself I'm gonna use like this wash brush looks good so I'm just gonna take it and load my brush with this mixture and then apply it to the surface and I have fan blowing on me which I don't know if that's good or bad just making my paint dry faster and get it on there I'm moving pretty quick but I always move quick so I mean I don't know again this is like it's actually not the first time I've done it but all right take that crumbled piece of shop towel and pounce it on the surface so I'm picking up And I didn't get, I think I would, I want to add more paint. I think I'm going to add a tiny bit more paint just because it's my piece and I think I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to use the brush and just mix that in. Now I feel like I'm going at least like this almost feels like it's a one to one, which that might be too much, but I don't know. And I'm just going to rinse my brush and then I'll load it and we'll base the back of the or one of one of the sides of the top of the piece so I, I'm going to load it up and see I like having a little more color The glaze, I'm pretty sure the glaze keeps it wet a little longer. And like I said, I have a fan blowing on here. So hopefully, and I'm trying to move fast, cover the whole surface. And again, the shop towel. And 
what? I guess it's it's like kind of like rag rolling, right? Isn't that like the old technique you would use and, and people would do this faux finish to their walls in their house? I think it was called rag rolling or something. And anyway, when it dries, see this looks a little too uniform because I held my shop tail in the same position and I have that, you have to move around. So this this will be the back. But look, this is already drying and look at the effect. It's very subtle. See, I want it to be I want it to be a little darker. So that's why I'm glad I have a few surfaces to do this with. Anywho, all right, I got to do it on these little pieces too. You can't leave out the little pieces here. I don't know if I have any more. Anywho, I just wanted to show you I think when I did it on my ATC, it really impressed me, <laughs> and I thought I'd just share. So this is just another way to get a background without, I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a simple way. I kind of like how that looks without blotting it. Just blot it and leave it. So anywho, all right, this looks kind of dry. I'm going to flip and try one more time. So glazing medium and paint. That's too little. I'm going to go one to one almost. So it's a little more like a one to one ratio. It's like a two to one ratio. I'm not going to rinse my brush. So this is basically the back or the front, whichever one I like better. But wait till you see the phone stand. It's so cute. I made it my own because I changed the way she did the butterfly, I'm sorry, the dragonfly wings. And I like it. I'm happy. So I just went, I did whatever. I didn't care if there were stripes or whatever. Look, so let's see. Make sure I turn the shop towel. I like that much better. It's going to dry. It's going to look much better. So this is the back. I'm going to I'm going to do it again. I like that much better. So let's just go with this. This looks like a good and I'm really putting it on thicker. And then I think that's it. I don't know if there's any stamping under here. Because this piece has a lot more. This is one of the sugar skull pieces. Look, look how much I put. I love it. That's why. So this is going to be the, I'll bet you this is going to be the front. And my shop towel. I love it. Okay, good. I'm happy with this one. Uh, oopsie. I think that's going to be the front. Look at that. I get so excited. Yeah, this is too mistakey. And I'm just taking the extra paint and kind of rubbing it along the sides just to tone it in there. Get the tone on there. I love it. This is going to be so pretty. All right, I'll show. I'm going to put that over here in the fan. And I'm going to move in my finished piece. OMG, you guys. So, the last bits of, all it was was two black lady, uh, ladybugs. God, can I name it the right bug? Anyway, I did this, basically. When I did this dragonfly ATC, where is it? I did the same thing. So I figured I didn't need to repeat that for you guys. But... I did not do what one thing that she called for was to do a whole wash of asphaltum on the whole thing. I just did the edges and I used a little bit of spatter too, but the last little thing I got to do is a float um, along the word and I chose to use create because this is a gift. This, this mug right here was a gift 
that someone made me, Alex. So thank you, Alex. I am, I love it so much. All right, so this is going to be for him. And I'm going to get, oh, my asphalt, I'm dried. Like I said, I do have a fan hitting me here. So I'm just going to take a little bit and float it along the bottom of the word to blend it in. And that's it. It's done. But here, so here's what I did. Tracy's, if I go, I'm going to have to go on my phone because the color, my color on my printer was not working. So basically, here's how she did hers. Just really white and soft and a little bit of the blue in the corners. And that's it. And I think she actually put bling going down the body. So I decided to use uh, pearlescent paint. Because when I think of dragonflies, I think of iridescence, that shimmer that comes off their wings. So I used the, the uh, Martha Stewart pearl white. And I based, well, first I did a coat of just plain uh, warm white. Then I did the pearl white. And then I just floated, you know, my go-to, what is it, this one. This one's called Halo Blue Gold. And it's a metallic paint by Jacquard for um, fabric. And... I just used that to shade it with so that it came up sparkly and you know I made it my own. I did sign my name and as I've been painting I've been making sure that I've been using this little tool. It's a ceramic tool that I've just had forever and I've just been taking it and kind of scraping it along this little slot to make sure. Now this is, uh, let's see, I base coated, I just covered it with matte medium and I'll probably do another coat on all sides to make sure that it's sealed but yeah that was the side I chose I think they both turned out super pretty so this is the other side of my when I added the color and then I only spattered one side of the feet the legs so you just basically you put this in you slide it you just wiggle it and it goes in I mean, it might still be a little, little bit tacky, so I'm going to let it set up. And then these two little things go here. And they're a little tacky, so I definitely should wait. And then it's a phone stand. Doo -dee doo doo oh. So see? It's just simple. has little legs on it. I love it. I'm so happy with it. I love that I added my own little thing to it. And I used Tracy's pen. This is the pen she recommends. The Signo Uniball DX. It's only a .38, so it's a really small, uh, fine line. So I love it. Now my, my things are a little stuck in there, so I'm going to have to work them out. I want to break it. All right, you guys, but look, I want to just show you that now that it's dry this background too and I'm gonna trade I'm just that's it the background is done and this is gonna have a sugar skull this one so the pattern is gonna like there's gonna be pearls coming down it but you'll be able to see a little bit more of the background I shrunk the pattern down on this one to fit an ATC but I just really wanted that to show I'm so happy yeah I don't love the back but this is for me anyway so I love it so much. All right, you guys. So that's it for today. And I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to get up to. I might come back with a Pandora video. But I love it so much. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching.